I'm gonna show you according to the Bible what you must do and how you supposed, supposed to move. How old are y'all, if you don't mind me asking? 19. 19 and 18. Okay, all right. Now, ask a question. I got I got everybody. What question you got? What what you say that they did not supposed to be a boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh-huh. So like make that make sense. Oh, I like that. We're gonna make it make sense. We're gonna make it make sense according to the Bible. Matter of fact, give me out. Uh, I, I know I got you there. Hold that. Give me uh, Exodus 21, 16. And then before that, give me um, Nehemiah 8 and 8. We're gonna, we're gonna, everything I've told you, is it not out of the Bible? It is out of the Bible, but. No, there's no but, no, no, Tamara. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It what is but? A, you? It's a but for me. Okay. What's your name, sis? Samara. Samara. We must get our minds right. Guess what? Did you know that as women, you cannot wear pants? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. You did? Yeah. So why do you do it? Did, why? How, okay. How did you know that you can't do it? Romelo, I want you to pay attention. I don't know, I don't know how I didn't know that. I, I knew it. That's how I was raised, but... Uh-huh. But you still did it anyway. Because yeah. did grandma have uh, pants on or she had on a dress? You see that? So somewhere in time, something came along or an event happened that changed the minds of the women to start wearing pants. Right. That's what, in the 60s? Right, right. In the 60s, Amelia Bloomer. Right. Right? Feminist movement. Right. Wearing pants, women wear pants, it's feminist. You understand that? The feminist movement. That's how our sisters like, you can't tell me what to do. Okay, I'm going to wear pants. There is women pants. What kind, of, what, what kind of pants is women pants? Why is there a zip on the pants? Why, why are you pulling? You're not pulling up to that. What are you doing? Yeah. You understand? That is, that is a psychological play they do on our sister's mind. Wow. Because guess what? With the pants come a spirit. Because right. the women, when they wear pants, they say, there's a saying that says, uh, I wear the pants in the relationship. What does that mean? And oh, I got this question. For, I'm a got and I got you. You the boss of the relationship. All right, go ahead. So here's the problem, Romelo. Did God say they're equal to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. First Corinthians 11. I'm gonna show you. This is what this is what I'm trying to explain to y'all. The, the way we think, it is not what God said. It is what this devil said. This is not Christ. Right. Everybody, when they think of Christ in our community, they think of this. Right. And the doctrines or the teachings that come with that. Equality, being equal, say the man to the woman, is this guy. God did not create uh, us equal. We're in the beginning, who did God create first? Yep. Adam, and who we created next? So is Eve equal to, to Adam? If they were equal, they would be created together at the same time. Watch this. First Corinthians. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. I got a question for you. Are kids equal to you? Are kids equal to you? The kids that you give birth to, are they equal to you? No. Why not? Are they innocent? No, because they're kids. Kids, they're children. Because you're teaching them. Guess what the man does to his wife? He teaches his wife. That's right. Watch this. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the man has a, has a head. That head is Jesus the Christ. Where is it at? Right here. That is our head, the man, Jesus the Christ. Not this devil right here, right? But the black Messiah. True description according to the, the Bible, all right? Read it from the top again. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Mm -hmm. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh-oh. You heard that? Tamira, I want you to hear it again. Because you've been, you've been, you know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I won't understand it. What? I'm trying to hear your point of view. Watch this. I do not have a point of view. My point of view is the Bible. You understand? Because uh, when we say our own point of view, we go off of what we see on TV or what we learn in the church. And all of it is lies. Read this. But I would have you know 
that the head of every man is Christ. So the man's head is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman. The man is over the woman. And the head of Christ is God. Even Christ, Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, got a head. The head, his head is the Father. Go ahead. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. See that? And the Bible says, when the Bible is coming out and the sisters have her head uncovered, you're dishonoring your head. You understand? That would be your husband. All right? If it's not, you don't have a husband, that's Christ. Right? So you're supposed to have your head covered when you're going to pray or you hear the Bible coming out or you're reading the Bible. So that's why I said the order God established is the Father, Christ, man, woman, and children. Right. That's the order of the Bible. Right? They're not equal to the man. You understand? Give me our uh, first Peter 3, weaker vessel. Is that it? First Peter 3? Yes, weaker vessel. I'm going to show you. Somebody that is, the Bible says that they're weaker. The women are weaker. The weaker vessel, right? Because meaning that you're subs you're open. Because in the beginning, who did Satan come to? Did he come to Adam or did he come to Eve? Eve, right? He could get to Adam through her, right? So that's why the man has to build his wife up in the scriptures so that the household could be locked in and, 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 and be focused on the commandments of the Lord. All right? Read this. This is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. That's where the Bible is talking about the husband is supposed to be teaching his wife. The knowledge it's talking about is the commandments of God. So we got to dwell with our wives according to knowledge. We have to teach our wives the commandments of the Lord. Read. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And we honor the wife. You see that? It, that was very clear as the weaker vessel. That doesn't mean we dis disrespect our wife. It says we honor our wives, right? And, uh, and the wives got a role. Titus 2. And the wives have a role. The women have a role. That is not their obsolete. No, we love our wives, right? But we have to move in accordance to what the Bible says. That's the only way we're going to be on the same page. If you want to do your own thing and wear pants, and I'm over here trying to lead you, that can't work. There can't be two men in the relationship. You understand that? Even though you have the appearance of a woman, you, you, you're dressing as a man. That is out of order. Read this. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged women, likewise, that they be, be in behavior as becometh holiness. So the aged women now, they're being taught by their wives. They, they come, come up in age, right? They learn the things. So it's, that's how it's supposed to be. But it's supposed to be based on the Bible. You understand? This is how, no, don't do this. When you have a husband, this is how you do it. This is how you show love, right? Make sure you cook, right? Make sure you learn how to, make sure you dress a certain way. You know, those type of things, that's what they're, they're supposed to pass on, right? I'm just gonna explain, read. Titus chapter two and verse four, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love, not get into, cause you see a lot of our young women in where? In the clubs, turning up, getting lit, as they say, getting drunk, wasted. You get what? You get that you can't be in drunkenness, my brother. Romello, you can't be in drunkenness. You can't. I'm gonna prove that to the. But you said you get messed up. What does that mean? It get you drunk. Romello. We already. Romello, stop playing games, my brother. What's your name? Kai. Guy, okay, guy. What we're going over is the order that God set up, which is man, uh, Christ, man, woman, and children, right? And over Christ is the Father. So there's an order established. Because in our communities, right? Don't our sisters run around saying, oh, I'm the, I'm the boss, I'm a boss chick. And they're, they're telling the man what to do, right? I, it might not be you, right? It may not be, all praise is not, it's not you, right? But guess what? There are women like that. There are relationships like that in our communities. God said it shouldn't be that way. You understand? This should be not be boyfriend and girlfriend in our communities. Hey, yo. Yes, sir. I got boyfriend and girlfriend right here. Come, Anna, come forward. About that too. Come forward. How y'all doing? What's your name? Arjan. What's your name, sis? Anna. All right. There shouldn't be boyfriend. I want y'all to look on the sign right here. Okay, so what is I got you. Hold on one second. Okay. I got to tell him. I want y'all to look on the sign right here. And according to your father, 
What are you? Look at the sign right here. This is what society calls you, right here. This is what God calls you, right? So what are you? I'm gonna start with you, the man. Judah, all right, what, what's you? Ephraim? So two Israelites, God commanded, I'm gonna get out, hold on. I'm gonna show y'all how great y'all are. And so y'all boyfriend and girlfriend, right? I'm gonna show you according to the Bible what you must do and how you're supposed, supposed to move. How old are y'all, if you don't mind me asking? 19 and 18, okay, all right. Now, ask a question. I got, I got everybody. What question you got? What, what you said that they did not supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh huh. So, like, make that make sense. Oh, I like that. We're going to make it make sense. We're going to make it make sense according to the Bible. Matter of fact, give me, uh, I, I know I got you there. Hold that. Give me uh, Exodus 21 16. And then before that, give me um, Nehemiah 8 and 8. We're going we to, everything I've told you, is it not out of the Bible? It is out of the Bible, but. No, there's no but, no, no, Tamira. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. What but? It's a but for me. Okay. Because we, we didn't, we not all raised by, strictly by the Bible. I didn't, I, I got you, Tamira. I grew, I grew up in the church. I, I grew up in many uh, denominations. I, I, did. I get you too. I, I understand. And there's things we learn, right? And we don't know the right way. Yeah. Guess what? Everybody who's been to the Christian church, raise your hands. Guess what? We learned that there is a different way. We learned the right way. That did not stop us from changing. So guess what? I was there with you. I was in the Baptist church. Right. I was seeing the plates pass around collecting my money and I needed to pay my bills. Thinking I believe I, I get this money, oh God gonna bless me. No, we all were there in falsehood serving a white Christ. Right. When the Bible says he's black. But guess what? We heard the truth and we repented. We changed. Watch this. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. So they read in the book of the law. No, excuse me. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and gave the sense. You said, make it make sense. Read that part again. And gave no, the sense. Read in the book where? So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. Where, where are we reading from? The book of God, right? And, what? and gave the sense. And we're gonna give you the understanding, the sense of what the Bible means. Because guess what? When you go to church, it'll be, ha, ah, ah, ha. And then they close the Bible. And that's it, that's the end of the service. You did not learn anything in right. the church. Right? But we're going to give you the sense. Now, Hebrew. Read it. And cause them to understand the reading. And we're going to cause you to understand. We're going to give you the understanding so you can understand what the Bible is actually saying. And what God requires of you. Because the topic right now is boyfriend and girlfriend. Is that right according to the Bible? Are y'all married? Are y'all together? Let me ask that. Are y'all married? Okay. So, boyfriend and girlfriend. Not married, boyfriend and girlfriend, right? My brother right here. Engaged? Oh, so you're on your way, all right? You're right in that, okay, that's fine. Hebrews, Hebrews, let's get Hebrews first. And we're gonna walk through the scenarios our people deal with. Because when our people don't marry each other, right? The, the man marrying the woman, the woman, the man, right? And not not uh, interracial marriages, not homosexuality, the Bible is against that. You understand that? It's a man and a woman, that's how you continue a nation. You understand? Read this. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse four. Marriage is honorable in all. No, the Bible says boyfriend and girlfriend is honorable to God. What did it say? Marriage is honorable in all. So the Bible says that marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Meaning whatever you do, married, man or woman, married together, whatever you do in your bed, that's to you, that's private, all right? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now the question is, what is a whoremonger or what is an adulterer that the Bible says God will judge them? Do you wanna be judged? Do you wanna be judged? 
Do you want to be judged? Do you want to be judged? Judge. Do you want to be judged? Guy, do you want to be judged? No. Yeah, we deal with boyfriend and girlfriend, right? None of us want to be judged by God for something he said, don't do. Because God is going to say, pull the records up and say, on the Sabbath, I had my prophets out here in Gainesville telling you that you shouldn't be boyfriend and girlfriend. But you didn't listen. You continued. Guess what? So now, I'm going to have to judge you. Because we're God's children. And when children don't listen to their parents, guess what? They get whoopings. This was a whooping on us for not listening to what God said. This was a whooping to us for not listening to what God said. Just like how we beat our kids for not listening to what we say, this is the same thing God does to us. And in Puerto Rico, they did the same thing. They came there and stole all the rubies. Y'all was just playing with rubies as if it was just stones. They came and st uh, the conquistadors came and stole it. They brought the blacks over here and worked the fields, the cotton fields, the sugar cane fields. Right. They did that all over the world and made us slaves. But guess what? We're the same people. We're the Israelites. That's right. And we must repent and keep God's commandments. When we learn the commandment, we must do it. Now, read that part. Read uh, Hebrews again. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Yeah. Marriage is honorable in all. The Bible says we're supposed to marry because hormones and adulterers will be judged. So guess what? In boyfriend and girlfriend relationship, usually what happens is that someone y'all will have an argument or a little little uh, uh, disagreement and be like, "Oh, I'm going over here. I'm going hit here. I'm going over here." And during that time, y'all sleeping with other people, right. dating other people, right. and then when y'all finish being mad, it may not be y'all, right? But when y'all finish being mad, they be like. I don't even know why, why we was mad at each other. Let's come back together. Isn't that what, is not that what happens? That's what happens, right? That, that's, thank you. It's, I don't both ends, guys. And what you saying? I don't both ends, be real. No, no, it happens on both ends. It happens, the man does it and the woman does it. Both of them, because guess what? You're not married. Marriage says that, okay, I'm locked into this person. This is the person I'm dealing with for the rest of my life, right? I'm going to build a family with this person. Right. No matter what happens, I'm, if we get a disagreement, come on, babe, let's sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Let's go through the scriptures and see where we went off. And let's fix this, Bring right? So that the children can have a healthy environment to grow up in. Right. If you're boyfriend and girlfriend and you have a child and the dad going over here and the, and the woman going over here, the child is like, where's my parents? Right. And they get messed up in the mind because right. they're not seeing a healthy relationship. And guess what? That continues the cycle within our community. That's why we messed up in the head. Because we have, don't have healthy relationships. You ever see white folks, kids? Do they got to think about that? They see both parents. They're happy. Our kids, like, yo, they're going to be looking at rap. They're beginning waving guns in, in the, in, on the screen. Doing all kind of foolishness. Because both parents is not in the household. Usually what happens is the mother is raising the kids, the boys, and the kids. And the boys is jacked up in the mind. They have effeminate traits because they're learning from their mama. They don't have a daddy like, hey, what you doing putting on their shoes right there, your mama's shoes? Take that off. Right. right? They don't have that. So they grow up being effeminate. Then sometimes they turn homosexuals. Why? Because both parents, we breaking God's laws. That's why we messed up in the head. It all stems from not following what God says. The solution has always been on your countertop, on your, on your, on your dashboard, on, on, in, your, in your car. It's always been the Bible. That's right. But we have not learned that we are in the Bible. We cannot see ourselves in the Bible. We see ourselves as Gentiles. God says we're the Israelites. That's right. Watch this. Exodus now. Because I spoke about boyfriend and girlfriend. When you sleep with a woman, right? Should you make her your wife? Or should... You, there's a proper way to do it, right? But should you make her a wife? Or you just... Hey. No. Yeah, but do you just okay? That daughter is a is a is she's a daughter to a man, right? And you slept with her, right? The Bible calls it humbling her, right? You take her virginity, right? So now, do you leave her and say, okay, she can go with another man, or you should be like, you know what? We we was we was feeling each other and stuff like that. We messed up here, right? We shouldn't have done this. There's a right way to do it, right? You're supposed to, but do we do it? Bring it up. So we just keep sleeping with each other, right? 
and then we get the falling out, and then you go over there, she go over there, and she go with another man, you go with another woman. Right. Isn't that what happens? That's what happens, right? And guess what? God calls that whoredom. Right. That's what we read in the Bible where it says that God will judge whoremongers and adulterers. That's right. This whole, our whole communities are filled with whoremongers. Right. You wonder why we're, we're the highest in STDs? Bring it out. That's why. Because we keep sleeping around with each other. If we was married, we ain't got to worry about no disease. We got just going to be like, yo, I'm sleeping with you, you sleeping with me, we ain't got nothing. We ain't need to be worried about nothing, right? But if you sleeping here, sleeping there, and some of us risk it. Like, yo, uh, I'm going to come get drunk, and then you sleep with somebody. You, that could be a last time. You could catch AIDS. Right. That's how God judges you by the STD. Right. Give you AIDS, and then you die. You're in the hospital bed, bed looking like a damn prune. A raisin, and finna just die. That's how God judges. This is serious stuff. You understand? Read that, Exodus. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid. If a man, like you did, our brothers, right? Y'all spitting game to the sisters, right? Talking game, you know, it look good, all that stuff. They get in our head, right? The Bible says if you do that. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if you spit game to a sister, you know what, 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 what you do in the world, man. You know that. You spit game to a sister, right? You get in her head. Then next thing you know, you get in her drawers. And then you lie with her. The Bible says you shall surely endow her to be your wife. That's right. Because you're making a whore out of her. That's, right. That's a, a whore. Let's think about it. A whore, right? What happens? The man sleeps with her and then he leaves. Right? And then she goes to another man and the same process happens. That's what God says you're making her a whore. Right. We're not supposed to do that. We're not Because when you have a daughter, do you want your daughter to go through that? Bring it out. Bring it out. So why do we do it to the, our sisters? We jacked up in the head. Right. That's why we do it. We know what, we know it's wrong. Even without reading, we know it's wrong. But we still do it because you want to satisfy the, the current flesh. You want to, oh, I'm feeling this way. She look bad. I'm going to try to get with that. But you're supposed to prove her, and then if it works out, you see she's fit to be a wife, she may need to learn a few things, then you can say, okay, we're gonna pause for a second, you fix that, all right, and we're gonna see where we at. That's the Bible says, that's called proving. Give me a, uh, Sarah, six. The Bible covers everything. The Bible is our book that governs us as a nation. So we do not need to guess what to do. You understand? So guess what, my brother right here, sister, not married, you need to marry. Right. Because if you sleep with each other, y'all are homeowners. Y'all will judge you. If you want, do not want to be judged, you need to get married. That's what the Bible said. That That's what we just right. read. You understand? Watch this. Read this. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So a marriage is supposed to start out as friendship. Right. You ain't sleeping with each other. You're trying to know that person, get to know that person. See where their mind at. She's seeing where your mind at, right? Can y'all come together and build some? Can y'all make a great family, right? Y'all supposed to be proving each other. You understand? Go ahead. And be not hasty to credit him. You, and you can't be there, because we do that. We like, oh, I think she good, man. She know what I'm saying? She, she, she look good, she dress good. I think she good for be a wife. But what about her mind? She may be crazy. Right. Right? She may have a hormonal spirit on her herself. She may cheat on you two weeks later. You don't know that. Bring it up. But that's what proving is. Proving gets to find out what is in each other's mind. So you can see if you can build together. All right? Because a nation, a strong nation, is built upon a strong family unit. It starts with the family. You understand, Read Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. See that, so today, I want y'all to think about this, today. A lot of women, my brother, guy, right? You've been up a few dates, right? Right? A lot of women go on dates so they can get a meal. Ain't that right? That's what they do today, right? Says, right, what's your name? Anna. Anna, I, I, I'm not good with names, right? But I remember your face. So, all y'all faces. So do they not do that today? You see it on TikTok, you see it on uh, YouTube Shorts, you see it on Instagram, you see it all over. That's what they do. Get, read that part again what the Bible said. For some man is or, a- Or woman. 
for some man is a friend for his own occasion. She feeling hungry? Bring you up. Hey. You know, I think we should go out today. Oh, okay. Right? Well, I've been seeing I've been seeing this nice spot and you know I think it'd be great for us. You know, you've been always saying you're gonna take us out, you know. That's what they do for their own occasion. Right? So they can post it on the live on the Instagram, so they can satisfy themselves. Got nothing to do with you. But if you was proving her, you would know that about her. You understand? Watch. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. When you going through, when you ain't got no money to buy no meals no more, right? If she great and you proving her, she gonna stick with you. That's where you know when you, if y'all get married, she gonna hold you down when you got it. She's not gonna leave you and say, oh, you a broke nigga, and then go to another man. All this while she had a, a, another man on the side right here that you don't know about, but. When things are not good, she leave you and go there. Turn another man. But if you're proven her, you avoid all of this. The Bible gives you the solutions to your problems. All of us. I'm still learning solutions myself. I'm trying to get all of y'all on the same page. Start, start reading and understand what God requires of you. We got a school in Jacksonville. Learn what's required of you because the Bible will give you the answers. Right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word, his word.